I actually thought I was good at this game at one point, until I fought Magusar and got my ass handed to me. Now I feel like I've only just scratched the surface, which is a little concerning because I'm the one who's supposed to be doing a review. But I think that's the beauty of this title. No matter how long you play, there's always seems to be something new to learn. Offering a variety of customization, no two people will ever experience it the same way. Here's my review of Soul Sacrifice for the PlayStation Vita. I hate to admit this, but it's been a while since I've played a Vita game that looked this good. And I'm not talking about a port of a game, I'm talking about a dedicated game made specifically for the PlayStation Vita. Right off the bat, I was completely blown away by how smooth everything ran. It's quite impressive when you consider the amount of stuff that's happening on screen. There's plenty of effects and magic spells constantly being thrown around. The game doesn't look dull, that's for sure. Enemies and monsters look great as well, highly detailed and very distinct. The only problem is that there's not enough of them. Palette swaps do help add a little variety, but a few more additional monsters couldn't have hurt either. Regardless, what is there is amazing to look at. I was so shocked when I saw the swarm of rats running across the ground for the first time. The effect is pretty cool. Trying out the various different offerings was also a visual treat. I really enjoyed watching the animation as you're performing the special attacks. The choreography that goes into summoning a spell or handling a weapon is second to none. It looks really good. The environments in which you fight in are equally amazing. Great detail can be seen from a distance, and although most of the terrain is flat and barren, they give ample room for the destruction and mayhem that's about to take place. My only complaint here is that some of the ground texture can look a little pixelated. It's a very minor blemish, but I think it's worth noting. Another graphical highlight comes from simply reading the game's lore. There's no cutscenes, but there are interesting effects used to help illustrate the story. An aspect of the game I think is often overlooked. It's a stylized way of storytelling, which I feel deserves more credit. The controls are a little confusing at first, since the game doesn't really tell you how the mechanics work. You're sort of just given hold of the controls and left to figure things out for yourself. It's not a big deal, but it can be discouraging for those who need a little more guidance with these type of games. A clunky camera doesn't help either. It shows you what you want to see for the most part, but targeting enemies is a little imprecise. There's a useful lock-on system, but sometimes it'll target an enemy from across the screen. The enemy has to be directly in front of your character's line of sight in order for a proper lock-on. Another problem I had with the controls is that since the sacrifice and spell switch are mapped to the R button, I found myself undoing and offering more than I wanted. Here's a tip. Go into the options and switch the R and X buttons. Practice makes perfect, so these problems did become less apparent the more I played the game. Another minor annoyance, at least for me, is the use of the front touchscreen. I really hate how you need it to activate the black rights. It's imprecise, and there always seems to be some sort of delay. It's like you had to give it a second after it was available for you to activate it. And even when you did, you had to have your thumb perfectly pressed down on it. I really wish I could let you guys listen to the actual music from the game, because it really is quite beautiful. Rousing orchestral pieces help punctuate the combat while slower, more mystical piano-like melodies help add a more haunting tone. I left the game on one time as I was taking notes for this review, and I couldn't help but be moved by what I was hearing. It was reminiscent of like a trapped soul that was haunted by an unforgettable past. Now maybe I'm thinking into it a little too much, but man, there is some powerful stuff in this game. If you ever get a chance, right before you go into a mission, just let the game sit there and listen to the music. The voice acting is also top notch. You get a narrator reading each page of the story, as well as the occasional commentary coming from Librum. He's funny and witty, helping to provide just the right amount of comic relief. I just wish they did a better job with the lip syncing. You ever get cramps? From all this sitting around? Weapons and spells sound great too. giving each action you make an impact and sense of power. In Soul Sacrifice, you take on the role of an imprisoned sorcerer, who's reliving the life of another sorcerer by reading through his journal entries. At least that's what I think is going on. It's an action RPG similar to that of Freedom Wars. Levels are mission-based, 
each one ending with some type of reward, which can be put towards upgrading your abilities, or in this case, offerings. That's what your magic spells are called here. Offerings. The game has a beautiful art design, with menus laid out like chapters of a book. It was a little confusing to navigate at first, but I soon got a handle on it. The story is quite interesting, told through some very beautiful hand-drawn artwork, complete with cool looking effects. And like an actual book, you can flip back and forth through the pages by using the front touchscreen. Reading through each chapter prompts you with a mission. Fight a certain amount of enemies on screen, or find and eliminate the boss for that level. There's no key cards you're gonna have to find or puzzles to solve. There is, however, some stages requiring you to use your mind's eye to locate glowing orbs. But other than that, it's strictly straightforward combat. And that's not actually a bad thing, especially when the combat is so satisfying. The problem lies in the upgrade system. Whether you're trying to improve an offering you currently have equipped, or hoping for a certain boss to drop a random essence, there's gonna be a lot of grinding. And when I say grinding, I don't mean the thing you do at the nightclub. Boss encounters become increasingly more difficult the further in you go, so this is something unavoidable. It wasn't until I got an understanding on how to upgrade my offerings that I realized how much grinding I was going to have to do in this game. There's also another feature in the game I want to touch on. Upon defeating an enemy, you're given the option to save or sacrifice. Saving restores a little health and will boost your defense, while sacrificing improves your magic. It also may affect what missions are given to you later on as well. I love the way the victim begs for mercy after their defeat. Please, spare me my life. You can almost get a sense of their desperation. And this might be just me, but I think it's hilarious how everyone gets into a pose to perform the sacrifice. It's so dramatic. Now, I'm going to get a lot of complaints on this one, but other than the few reasons I just mentioned, I really didn't see any difference between choosing to save or sacrifice. Maybe it's because I kept my save and sacrifice meter about even. I didn't really favor one over the other in fear of having my character unbalanced. So maybe that's why I didn't notice anything. Did anyone else play like that? And regarding the online pass? Guys, don't even bother. Save your money. I wasted 10 bucks just to find that out for you. There are, however, plenty of free additional DLC missions still available, so remember to check those out. I also can't forget to mention the offerings. They were just so fun and unique to try out. Strangely enough, I grew sort of an attachment to each one the longer I used it. You're given the choice of selecting six different offerings. Just taking a look at the ones I've acquired and seeing all the different possible combinations is mind-boggling. Some offerings can even be fused to create new ones as well. The game also allows you to equip sigils to your right arm, helping to boost certain attributes. If you're familiar with RPGs, then this really shouldn't be anything new. I just wish the game did a better job at explaining it. The biggest draw of the game, though, are the boss battles. This is where it's at. All those hours of grinding for loot will be rewarded, as the combat is very satisfying to say the least. Micromanaging all your various offerings are put to the test. There's really no greater satisfaction other than being able to conquer a boss you've been having trouble with for the past couple days. Battles are intense, kinetic, and just downright fun. And that is where I think you'll know whether you'll enjoy this game or not. If you're not the type to grind for loot to improve your abilities, then I will say this right now. This game is definitely not for you. It will get repetitive, no doubt about it. But the abundance of customization options at your disposal guarantees so many different playstyles. It adds just enough of that individual flavor, making each and every battle different from the next. Although I'm giving this game my approval, please know what you're getting yourself into. The story can be interesting, but it can't hide what the game really is. A giant grind fest. If you can get past the laborious nature of the upgrade system, then you'll be rewarded with some of the most satisfying boss encounters available. Soul Sacrifice for the PlayStation Vita comes recommended. I don't want to die. <laughs>